Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you for joining me today. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. I basically channel these messages from my spirit guides as I'm talking to you. Um, and I do have a lot of new subscribers. Thank you so very much. I'm happy to have you guys on board. Now, I've done a lot of videos and I've talked about this stuff ad nauseum if you ask me, but We've talked recently about the Trump trap, the Trump trap. Um, and the guides have said something is going to happen in September that is the first step of the trap or the first trap. And then there's a second trap that happens in December. The first trap is meant to basically put him on notice in a way that he cannot run away, that he cannot abscond to another country. Uh, um, Folks, we are here. It is the 3rd of September. Um, I, what I, the guides are showing me is a fish uh, on a hook. Uh, we have not landed the fish to the shore or to the boat yet. The fish is darting through the water, but the fish is hooked. Now, of course, he could potentially get off, but I don't think so. Let me also talk about the last video I did, which was like a marathon. At the very end of that video, they connected the dots in such a way that I think is very helpful. Now, I have to be honest and say that I don't remember what I channel, but I will say this. If I, this picture is so big, what they're showing me. There's so many moving parts. There's so many players. I, the guides have said this multiple times. There's not only double crossers, triple crossers, quadruple crossers. I don't know where you go from there, how the FBI even makes sense of who is quadruple crossing someone. I mean, these people that we're dealing with are so used to providing a service, meaning getting paid for something. I'll give you this, you know, page of this document and you could get paid for it. I'll give you this paragraph. I'll give you this, this one sentence, right? The guides talked about Trump having a subscription service where people would pay him a monthly fee and get access to those documents as he meted them out, as he kind of played them out. Uh, this was his retirement money. <laughs> this was his retirement plan. So here we are, we've got all these players. And as they're showing me this, the goal, and, and listen, I get it. You guys don't agree. I get it. Susan doesn't agree. 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES uh, plus one for complaints. Um, for whatever reason, there are two camps in the federal government, and these camps are becoming more defined. And what that means is they're starting to, they're starting to not want to compromise. That's what that means. They're being divided. These camps are actually starting to show a division. Now in the beginning, and I want to say, let's just say six months ago, that's what they're telling me. Six months ago in the beginning, quote unquote, when all this stuff began to be very real to our intelligence community, that our previous president did things with some documents, some secret service, some secret documents, high profile documents. He did some things with all those entities that he shouldn't have done, that he crossed a line, that he potentially allegedly broke laws. When all this started, the intelligence community gave the intel and the DOJ and the government, and I'll just say that that means Biden, his cabinet, I'm also now seeing generals that are serving under Biden. They all were in agreement that this should be handled. And again, they're using that word radioactive in previous videos. They've called 45 radioactive. He's too hot to touch. If you touch him, you'll get burned. Do you know what I mean? Something bad will happen to you. Now, isn't that true? Like, isn't that the way he operates? Like, if you come after me, I'll sick my goons on you. I'll, I'll alert the militias to do something, right? He's made these threats enough that we all know that. But it's beyond that. That is one level. 
The next level is that there was international cooperation is the words they're using to me right now. International cooperation with the previous president and them, these foreign entities, these foreign countries, and also power brokers. I'm hearing the word power brokers. So these are intermediaries. Maybe they're spies. I don't know. Maybe they're ambassadors because a lot of times ambassadors can travel from country to country and whatever is in their little briefcase cannot be checked. It cannot be investigated. It's, it's considered, you know, something that we allow. But there's these power brokers that were taking this information that was for sale and was, was selling it to other countries. So there are some countries, this is new information, by the way, there are some countries that didn't want to get their hands dirty. They didn't want to be caught buying secrets from another country. To be completely honest with you, these countries could actually be our allies. They utilized a power broker or an intermediary to purchase secrets from 45. This is brand new and first time I'm hearing this. Some of these countries, I can't name them, then turned around and backfed that intelligence to trusted intelligence within our country. Go back to the previous videos. The guides are said back last year, they said this when Trump was in office, actually. While Trump was in office, there was a a band, uh, a band of uh, what a, a group of intel professionals that were operating. I mean, it's is it good? Is it is it good to be outside of the law? You know what I mean? I mean, Trump's right in the sense that during his presidency, some of his people were operating outside of the law, right? I mean, but it was because there was a clear and present danger to our democracy that these professionals, these civil servants that had been in their jobs over many presidents, some of them going back to GW, decided, I can't stand by and let this happen. The guides reported on this back when Trump was in office. They showed me a basement, someone's basement in the middle of maybe Maryland. And in this basement looked like there was computers and screens and everything you can imagine, but it was also shielded for it was uh, encrypted and shielded and not only encrypted encrypted must mean encryption is through a computer right it was shielded from other types of listening devices or um i don't know i'm just telling you what they're telling me some sort of metal shielding like aluminum or some sort of shielding that physically those people reported to obama who was a pr past president and had clearance to receive intel. Obama, Hillary, and Biden all shared this intel with each other. This, I've spoken this aloud in another video, in at least one, maybe two or three videos. Okay, now, that's the backstory. That's why when I say, or the guides say, that they sold this information to our allies, and the allies backfed it back to us. That's an important thing that you need to understand. This is Biden walked into the White House knowing a lot more. And the guides also said that when Biden was elected, he has intel and has had intel for years on what is really going down. Now, so you have this clear and present danger to our democracy. And there's a camp in our in our administration that is really worried about how we look to other countries. Look, you guys can disagree with me and the guides all you want. I get it. It doesn't make sense. I get it. I want the man to be in jail. To be honest with you, I, I am very much in the camp of we just need to deal with this. If we don't deal with this, if we don't put him in jail, then... Um, what have we shown other countries, right? What have we shown them? We've shown them that we can be held for ransom. That's what we've shown them, is that we're willing to pay you off 
for our problems not to be public. That's what we're showing them. That's what Susan believes. I'm just simply telling you that there are factions within the government. One faction believes we cannot make this public. We have to find a way. We've got this fish. This fish is running through the water. The fish is T, 45, the former guy. We've got to find a way to get him in the net and to quietly make him disappear. Now, I'm going to be honest with you and say that doesn't exclude uh, fenestration, which is our new favorite word, right? Which has to do with windows. Um, so it doesn't exclude that, except for that there are no good answers here. If Trump choked on a Big Mac tomorrow and unfortunately passed from this living Earth planet, he would be a martyr. And people, there would be many, many more um, conspiracy theories that would launch and it would it would actually cause problems okay so so you know look do yourself a list of pros and cons right uh, you know and that's what they're doing they're trying to figure out what's the best way to handle this what are their issues they're considering well truly the president of the united states went on camera and did a 24 minute speech which i implore you to watch where he stood in front of Philadelphia, where the Constitution was written and said, we the people do not support violence in the cause of elections or in the cause of politics. We do not support that. He went on to say, MAGAs are supporting violence. He called them out. He called Trump out. He called out the fact that these people are supporting violence, that they are not for the police that they say they're for, that these very people attacked the police on January 6th. So he basically came out and took a stance and said, America is the United States of America. He said, I'm the president of the red and the blue, not just the blue. But what he did was he put all of them on notice. I'm the president. I know what you're doing. I know what you're planning. And I'm telling you that we're not going to put up with it. Okay, so this speech was just as much for the malicious and the Lindsey Grahams and the McConnells as it was for the average American person. Now, of course, this speech was not carried in primetime because primetime said it was too political. And Biden said there is no political making politics violent. So, um, why did Biden do that? Why did he go out and make such a, for him, strident speech, such a dramatic speech? Well, because one of the choices is to arrest Trump. If we arrest Trump, you guys, I've seen it. I know what it looks like. I, they've been showing me this picture for a year. I've got confirmation from high-level security. This is what they're worried about. Insurgency, insurgency, not a civil war. Truly, in some ways, worse than a civil war because it is kind of, I can't say certain words, guys. I, I'm, I really can't. But just imagine surprise pop-up A-T-T-A-C-K-S's. Imagine an organized group, much like some of the groups in some of the Middle East countries that United States soldiers went and fought against. Imagine groups like that, the groups that we literally went to war against. Imagine those tactics used against our own soldiers being used here against our own citizens. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is for real. When you guys say we should just lock him up, you guys don't really understand what's at stake here. Whatever you have seen as far as V-I-O-L-E-N-C-E -E in the past is going to be a hundred times, a hundred times more so. It's going to throw the, the whole country into turmoil. Okay, now that is very much possible. I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that's very much possible because I've seen it. I've seen the pictures. I've seen the visuals. I've seen the movie. And I've just been sitting here 
wondering if it was really going to happen. I have actually told you about this in videos. I've described it. Go back and look at my videos after Jan 6. I was sure the scenario I'm talking about now was going to happen last year. I saw it. I got the timing wrong, number one. But number two, it may not happen because honestly, Biden, the DOJ, and his cabinet are preventing this stuff. They're putting out the wildfire before it can burn. So I don't often talk about some things that I see because now I get that Biden's really doing some heavy lifting behind the scenes. And just because it's in our timeline, the energy is present in our timeline, doesn't always mean that it's going to actually come to fruition and be real, have reality. So this is what they're trying to avoid. They've got this fish on the line. They want, the trap has set, it's, it's corralled him, he's hooked. He's not caught yet. What we want is for him, what we want for him is for him to be defanged, okay? Uh, we, want for, we want him to be neutralized, not, not unalived, neutralized, but neutralized, okay? That's what we want. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry for all the fish rush references, guys. I do like to fish, but I haven't been, but I've been, a lot of my visual time has been spent underwater, looking at underwater scuba diving. And I'm, I'm, um, so I don't know. This is the, this is the visual that they want to use. And I apologize that this is too much fishing, but we have this fish on the hook, an injured fish. Pay attention to what the guides are saying. I want you to pay attention and I want you to read between the lines. When I'm channeling the guides, there's just as much they don't say as they do. An injured fish hooked is a target for bigger species to eat. Oftentimes, if you're fishing in saltwater, a shark will eat your fish before you can reel it in. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So, this is a possibility. And that possibility makes the fish even more scared. And sometimes the fish might jump in the boat to get out of the water because they feel like they're safer with the fishermen or women than with the shark in the water. So, what the feds are trying to do is they're trying to get this fish in the boat neutralize it but right now the fish is swimming around hooked up and 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 to be honest with you the fish is not very smart this is not a smart fish we're dealing with here this fish is calling sharks to it right and left right so um now there's these two camps in the government one wants to just lock him up look just throw the book at him and lock him up they don't have enough that they need. There are some very key witnesses that are corroborating key evidence right now, right now, between now and the next two weeks. Once those key witnesses corroborate this last bit of evidence, it's a shut and close, you know, open, shut, close case. It's done. It's airtight. And then... Uh, the problem, they're just reminding me. The problem is, is that you can go to him and say, this is a done deal. And he's not going to believe you. This is, this is where I'm going with this. He's not going to believe them. He still thinks, because he's an egomaniac, he still thinks someone in another country is going to save him. Remember the missing papers that we just heard about? Remember? Every video in the last three videos, the guides have said there's missing papers. They didn't get all the papers. No, they did not get all the papers. Here we are. The FBI is like, we have a folder, but no papers. The guides said this last week. They said this the week before. What did they say? Trump doesn't have the papers. What did they say? Somebody else has the papers and they're blackmailing Trump. <laughs> Trouble, triple, quadruple, crossed. Right? 
this guy, the camps in the, in the government is, in two weeks, we need to slap handcuffs on him because justice needs to be served. That, that the United States citizens, as well as the citizens of the world, need to know no one is above the law. Okay, I'm thinking Kamala Harris right now. Um, there's another part of, of, of the administration which would include generals, ambassadors, cabinet, intelligence that say our best thing to do is to stick with the two trap option is to bring him in, lock him down to some degree, and then allow him to be on house arrest. The problem is these two camps don't have a good psychic to talk to. There's lots of them out there, but I don't think they're talking to a good psychic because the only way this fish is going to jump in the boat, the only way that 45 is going to walk into the DOJ and say, uh, I need your help. I can help you. You help me. Remember? Quid pro quo. Because he's going to be afraid of that shark in the water. He's going to be afraid for his life. And for that very reason, he's going to want to be under house arrest because that's the only place he's safe. You guys, Ivana being unalived was a warning. There's another Russian that just got unalived through a window. These are warnings. There will be another warning. There will be more warnings. They may not be successful. They may be um, something that's ingested that makes you not feel so well and I have to go to the hospital. It might be something like that. That is a pretty serious warning, but there's more warnings coming. I'm telling you, you might not even hear about it. It might be that somebody's brake line doesn't work on a curvy road and they barely get by with their life. And I'm thinking now a male heir. I'm trying to use different words. Okay. These are warnings. When enough warnings, when they, when these kids believe these warnings, hands off, take him, <laughs> take him. You're going to have to take him because I'm not, I'm not losing my life. If you're going to let me live, take him. That's when 45 walks into the DOJ and says, we got to make a deal. You got to keep me alive and I'll stay. I'll do whatever you want. Right. But he's not going to say that because he'll never say that, but he'll say, let's make a deal. Right. He'll try to, he'll try to wager. He'll try to, you know, bargain. The DOJ knows this. This is one of their plans. This is the trap. Okay. So what is going to happen? I don't know right now. I'm telling you that there's sharks in the water. And I think that he is very fragile right now. And I think that if he uh, got his little angel wings or whatever devils wear, I don't know, horns, um, then he it would solve a lot of problems for some other people, other countries. Because he's getting desperate and he's starting to talk, right? Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing, you guys. He's talking to the press. He's literally building a case against himself by talking too much. He's proving himself guilty. It's only a matter of time before he says something that makes another country guilty, that drags another country into it. He's not an asset anymore. He's a liability. So I'm, I, I would, if I were him, I'd be very worried for my health. Okay. I don't know this month. Um, He's a braggadocio. They're, they're telling me, they're showing me that he still thinks he's a braggart. He thinks that he's in control. He thinks that he's a smarter. He truly thinks he's smarter than everybody else. Um, he's trusting the wrong people. They're telling me right now. Literally, swear to God, literally the feds are trying to save his life. I, I'm not even kidding you. Okay, right. Oh God, I don't know. This is crazy, y'all. Because 
as I saw that picture, because if something happened to him, okay, okay. Okay, all right, I can say it like this. There's another country that just wants to ruin, well, there's, there's not one, there's three or four. There's three or four countries that want to ruin America, that want to knock up, we're the king of the hill. We're the greatest country in the world. Well, they want to tarnish that. They want to ruin that for us. They want to knock us off of that hill. Now, how can they do that? They can cause unrest within our country. I've talked about this. If you're a regular viewer, this is not news to you. They want to cause unrest in our country. How do they do that? Through propaganda, through the internet, through talking to these kids on gaming sites and radicalizing them by radicalizing our own news services. CNN, case in point. So they do it that way. They do it other ways. They're not above, they're not above causing a suspicious accident for a very important person in America and then using their propaganda machine, which is FOX and CNN and a bunch of other things, News America, whatever, one, whatever, true social, they're going to use those things to spin it so it looks like the left did it. What does that cause? We go back to insurgency. Do, do you guys see what I'm saying here? Do you see how important it is that the DOJ muzzle him, keep him safe? He's a prize. He's a prize. He can be used against us in a very dramatic and hurtful way. That's why the DOJ wants to reel this fish in, put it in an aquarium where there's no windows, you know, where there's no, don't mix in my metaphors, but put him in a place, you know, in a, a little house arrest situation where there's no windows, no cell phone, no TV, no internet, no visitors. Because then we've neutralized more than one threat. How many threats? T himself, all the other countries that would use him against us. Now, if I run the scenario that if they, so when I run the scenario that they arrest him and he's in handcuffs and he's in Guantanamo, <laughs> you know, he's somewhere, right? Because you can't put him in a prison population. God knows. I mean, you can't even put him in club fed. His, all his buddies are in club fed. <laughs> he's, you know, he'll still be running the whole MAGA community from club, club fed. So he, again, he's still going to be in house arrest. He's still going to be in, in lockdown. One way it's controlled. Because he can be allowed to send out approved tweets. We can use him, control him to control his people so that we can crash land our plane in a much more safe way. The other way, of course, that's all part of the bargain, right? I'll send out five tweets for your, for you if you let me do this. I mean, there, it's a bargain. We're bargaining. We're, what is it? Ransom. We're paying the ransom. It's the same analogy. The other option is lock him up, throw away the key, and say, no, you're a prisoner. You get nothing. We don't care. We don't care if your MAGA people riot. We don't care about the insurgency. We don't care. We're America. We stand by justice. We stand by our laws. And if somebody breaks the law, we're going to arrest them and we're going to put them in jail. Go ahead and try us. Try us. Go ahead. Those are the two camps. The last thing I'm going to say is, please let it be the last thing they say, is I've always said the guides, when I say I and I'm channeling, it's them. Just inter interject. It's not me. The guides have always said that Kamala was going to be our president. The very first time I ever saw her was on TV. I'm not from California. I don't follow California politics. I didn't know her. First time I saw her was when she was 
um, the candidate for VP. And I saw her on TV for the first time and I heard the guides say in my head, president. She's going to be our president. This is one of those situations where it is written, it's in her contract to be a president. Okay. I do not see Biden finishing. I, I, I have seen it a couple of ways. I, in some scenarios that they show me, I have not seen Biden finishing his term and then she takes over his term. Now, if he does finish this term, which is not likely, I, I can't see it. I, what I do in my psychic readings is like, um, if you can imagine that I make a game piece out of you, like a little bobblehead doll. And I move that little bobblehead doll along the timeline of your life. I just move it forward. Are you happy? Are you unhappy? What are you doing? I can move you to different states, different jobs, whatever. And then I see, how does this person feel here? When I move Biden down this timeline to the election, either A, he doesn't run. Or B, he has to step down before the election. Wow. They just showed me something I didn't know. Um, you guys, it's it's we're in for we're in for some turmoil. Okay, I've been saying this. This is not news. If you watch this channel, we're in for some turmoil. These people that follow 45 are not well balanced people. A lot of them are violent. A lot of them are armed. So, um. They just showed me a scenario where Biden gets to, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. Where Biden gets to almost the end of his, the end of his, oh, okay. Right. I mean, my brain, I'm telling you guys, Susan can't think of this stuff. I, I couldn't imagine this stuff. So we're having, okay, let me just put it to you this way. I'm going to put it to you this way. This is what I saw. Kamala is the law and order president. I see her being president. I see her being the law and order president. I don't, she is not, and I love Kamala. I, I'm not, this isn't Susan. This is the guides. Listen, guys, please understand. I can't see shit. This is the guides. They see the whole thing. Okay. The scenario suggests that Kamala is a law and order president. She is presiding over a country that is at odds with each other. There is civil unrest. There is infighting. What I'm really hoping that we avoid is some sort of race war, but it, it, it we keep going that direction. We keep going towards that timeline. What I see about her is that she's not particularly well liked because she puts the right. And when I say she, I know she's just the president. I know she's not the cops. I know she's not the police. But she says in her own words, if you break the law, you go to jail. She is not going to care if you're an R or a D. She's not going to care if you're conservative or liberal. She's not going to care. If you're black or white or brown or gay or straight, she don't care. You break the law, you go to jail. But these people, it's such an impassioned time in our in our country, in the timeline, that these people feel like they're they're on the right side, much the way the magas feel like the election was stolen from them, and that they had every right to storm the Capitol because they feel like passionately feel. The election was stolen from them so we're going towards this timeline where there's passions on each side and each side feels that they are right and Kamala's in the middle going no you're not right you broke the law okay so she's not particularly she's not particularly popular because well there's a lot going on you know but she is a fair president the guides keep saying she's a fair president she will be judged very warmly 
in the you know looking back historically when, when we're, we're looking back at her her tenure as president she is pivotal she's important she's the iron fist so this is where we're going um hopefully this has been helpful or illuminating or something i don't know i mean it's more data points right just think of it as data points this is energy um the reason I think that I don't want to say any more about that. I think I've said more than enough. Um, right. So the bottom line is, is that 45 game over, whether he's in, uh, you know, um, whether he's locked up because he's been indicted and charged and convicted or whether he's locked up in house arrest and we're playing it you know safe either way he's out game over game over either way doesn't matter well it does matter it does matter but either way the end result is that he doesn't have a mouthpiece he's not instigating he's not causing problems he's rendered he's neutralized he's neutralized how we get there i'm not sure yet because these camps have formed divisions they're not on the same page anymore they were on the same page but now they're not now there's really growing fast growing energy around we must indict we must charge we must convict and that energy wasn't there that energy was not there six weeks ago it, they didn't have the stomach for that there is really a growing and it's it's a growing energy but it's a strong energy it's like a steel backbone it's like there's a steel backbone happening and i honestly think that that those camps might have been there a little bit under the surface and i think biden has been the one to say no we're going to stay together we're going to stay together remember he's the guy that brings people together and i think the difference the reason why these camps are now being more defined is because biden is po'd and biden has finally said lock them up i don't care May the best group win, right? So there's two camps now that are formed and whoever gets him first wins and Biden doesn't care. In the past, he cared. In the past, he was trying to do this delicately. He was trying to do this without smearing our reputation or ruining America's reputation. But now he realizes, and that's what that speech was about. He realizes that the gloves are off our reputation is crap <laughs> we're and, and it's getting worse by the day it's getting worse by the day we might as well deal with this so i think and again i keep hearing september 15th um 15 16 18 somewhere around mid mid september expect something big a big a big something perhaps perhaps a charge against trump um and, you know, we'll be talking. I'll be talking with you because remember the guides told you guys, and I hope you did it, take vacation over the summer. They told you all this stuff is going to be going down, but there's nothing you can do. Take vacation. Take good care of yourselves. You still have time. Take care of yourself because we're going to call your number. You're drafted. We need you. We're going to need you this fall we're going to need all of us this fall if nothing else than to say prayers and spread light around the poll workers the voting the vote workers the registrars the voters themselves law enforcement we're going to need light around everything it's going to get i have a feeling giving these given the fact that these two camps have now solidified i think thing we're, we're gonna be i think there's a good chance that we're gonna have much more 
turmoil than we were going to have. Um, so at least anyway, you've got a heads up about it. The important thing to do here is to know that everything is okay in the end. In the end, democracy is preserved. In the end, our foes, our enemies know that they have been double-crossed by the very people that they trusted, that we have allies that we trust that have our back, proved that they, that they have our back because they intercepted these secrets and fed them back to us, and we're going to use that to charge him, okay? Everything is going to be okay, but between here and the time when it's okay, it's going to be dicey, so we need you to take really good care of yourself, okay? All right, good talking to you. Take really good care. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. For entertainment purposes only.